so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me. I welcome you to another discussion. If it's your first time here, welcome and thank you for joining us. So today I want to talk to you about how the narcissist is jealous of the super empath. Now, I know that there are some people on this platform on YouTube, especially self-proclaimed narcissists who will want you to believe that no, they are not jealous of you and you are merely a tool, um, an object of their affection, something that they will play with and discard when they feel like it lies straight from the pit of hell. You can't really expect the your own enemy to tell you the truth about yourself. It doesn't really work like that. At least I refuse to believe that. And I wouldn't go to a depraved mind to tell me about myself. But anyway, let's get into today's discussion. You know, the narcissist really had to be removed from your life. And it's not because the narcissist was trying to teach you anything, because quite frankly, a narcissist cannot teach you anything. They can cause great pain and misery and discomfort in your life. And what you can derive from all of that are lessons on how you will choose to protect yourself going forward. The narcissist didn't teach you anything. It was the experience that you had with that raggedy dusty behind that taught you. And this is ultimately going to be for your best. Because if we tell each other the truth, narcissists would rather keep you in their life as a source of supply. Listen, they are trying to line their harem with as much to um with as much supply or tools like they like to call it as possible they need appliances in the garage right whatever but anyway they are of a reprobate mind every day they wake up and they renew their resolve to be raggedy and dusty every day when they get up they seek out ways to devour somebody's happiness to devour somebody's peace, to devour somebody's joy, love, success, serenity. They want narcissistic supply 24 seven. The funny thing is you don't need narcissistic supply. We are not the same. So while you are loyal and faithful, and sometimes you even find yourself in a posture of prayer and fasting, seeking God for them to change. They're drinking more of the devil's Kool-Aid. That's why they can come and try to tell you about how to heal when they have never done it themselves. How can you listen to somebody tell you how to heal when they haven't done it? Y'all stop playing with this. This is not a game. Remember, God is a gentleman. He does not force his way into anyone's life. Everybody has free will. And this is something that the narcissist has to want for themselves. Change is going to have to be something that they truly desire and they are committed to. And if we know anything about a reprobate mind is that they are completely sold out to the person or the entity that they serve. You know, when I knew that there was something off in my in my last relationship, right? I earnestly sought God for help. And I said to God, and I was so desperate, I said to him, whatever you reveal to me, I'm going to listen to what you tell me. I just ask that you prepare my heart. I asked him to prepare my heart because I know how I am. I'm the kind of person that loves hard and loves till the wheels fall off. My best friend has always told me that I'm tender hearted and that's a very accurate description. And I guess that on a subconscious level, I knew that I needed to get out of this relationship. But at this point, I needed God confirmation which is so backwards because I don't ever remember seeking God about this relationship in the beginning and so you know that says a lot about where I was and it also should serve to remind all of us about how we should seek ye first the kingdom of God 
So, you know, I'm just being transparent and letting you know how backwards that was. I didn't ask him if this was something that he wanted me in, but here I am asking him, God, is this the thing for me now that I'm like in a big mess? But I want you to know today, super empath, that within these relationships, within these entanglements, we experience rejection. And a lot of times it's devastating because when I was at this point of asking God, is this the thing for me? I was experiencing rejection in the relationship for the first time. But I want you to understand that this rejection is purely for your protection. The narcissist may think that they're doing it to hurt you or whatever, but it is for your protection. For the first time in this relationship, I was being devalued in a huge way. And, you know, I've been thinking as I was trying to go over what I wanted to say to you today, I was thinking like, did I miss any other devaluations? But nothing really stands up or stands out in my mind except this particular season. And it was very brief, but it was so severe. And that's why I had to go to God because it was like going from day to night. I mean, I could call on this man at a moment's notice, any time of the day or night, and he would show up for me. There was one time when our puppy Diesel got really sick and you know i'm you know we were talking on the phone and i told him oh you know diesel's not feeling well and i said whatever i said about diesel but he came in in minutes notice and took diesel to the vet and literally just took care of everything and fussed over diesel until he was better and here i was thinking oh my gosh he loves me no girl he's love bombing you hello but you know Sometimes it looks that like a person is there for you, but I need you super empath to know that not everybody who is there for you is truly there for you. You know, the enemy always has an ulterior motive. You see, even when they are love bombing you, they're jealous of you. They're jealous of your success. They're jealous of your joy. They're jealous of your relationships with other people because they cannot maintain relationships on that level. They're jealous of your status, whatever it may be, of your friendships. They're jealous of your zeal for the Lord, your zest for life. And the more they get to know you, the more time you spend together, that jealousy miraculously increases it does not diminish because you know sometimes you may perceive something to be one way from afar but when you get close up to it you may find out that it's not what it was but no that jealousy just intensifies over time and they start to say things that will make you question who they are and what their true motives for you are and you may even wonder like how can somebody that loves me or says that they love me say and do these things to me these are the type of things that in you know that can cause you to be like me and start asking god what is happening here please help me but you got to remember according to luke chapter 6 verse 45 that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks their intentions will be made known to you based on what they are saying. They are revealing their true feelings for you. Now, you have to remember that before there was ever a you and I, there was our Father in heaven, and there was an angel named Lucifer who was jealous of God. He was so jealous of God that he did some things that ended up getting him expelled from heaven along with a third of the angels that believed in him. Now, do you think for a moment that the devil ceased to be jealous of God when he got kicked out of heaven? Absolutely not. No doubt did he stop. He never stopped at all being jealous of God. I truly believe that that jealousy intensified because now he was kicked out of the heavenly realms and is now being, he's now a belly crawling serpent. Hello. 
wouldn't you be like i mean what kind of a fall is that and so he is even more envious of god now that he is not in heaven and not only that he is fully aware of his fate so you know how that pathological envy that pathological jealousy over time can really manifest into hate why would the narcissist be any different with you we know that the apple does not fall far from the tree the jealousy is so severe with the enemy that he desperately tries to make as much impact as he can on grieving God and what other ways through what other ways can he do it but through causing immense pain on God's children this in itself is a testament to just how delusional the devil is because he thinks that he can have victory in your life and when i say victory in your life i'm talking about causing you tremendous amounts of pain now you might be saying to me hey joy hold up not so fast he did cause tremendous amounts of pain but i know that there is healing for the pain that he caused you so his victory is not final he remains raggedy dusty he remains a raggedy dusty behind should i say the narcissist is no different to their father again they are pathologically jealous jealous and envious people and this manifests as hate for the people that they spend time with those that they're in long-term relationships in any type of situation with over a period of time time isn't really an indicator they're just envious people and this causes them to do the unthinkable thing to hurt and torment the souls of God's children all in an effort to please their father because remember the enemy is envious of God and he seeks to grieve God's heart what other way by sending his child to grieve God's child it's a personal attack and they want to hurt you it's designed to take you out of what is familiar to you your own self your own identity and why 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 would they do that why would the enemy attack your mind the way that he does because he was kicked out of heaven he was kicked out of what he believed was who he truly was he lost his heavenly identity and so he wants you to lose your heavenly identity thus he must bastardize the way that you see yourself and that's why the enemy attacks your mind this is why the narcissist will always assault your mind first your mind is a gateway to your emotions and to your will that's why you fight narcissistic abuse with your mind your mind will naturally affect your emotions which in, in turn will affect your will and bring healing to your soul you know and just when we think we're drowning in all the pain that is narcissistic abuse mercy says no and that's when god steps in it's not that you had an awakening because of the narcissist no mercy said no God stepped in, divinity met your humanity, and he put a stop to it. And he gave you an awakening and brings you out of this situation. Narcissus did not awaken you to anything. All, it, all that happened is God got your attention to his strength and to what he wants to show you. And that's so Indiv you know it's individual or it's specific for different individuals that's why you must continue to seek ye first the kingdom of god you have to remember that it is not god's desire for you to be with somebody who does not respect you who does not love you who does not who does not value you god does not want to see you with somebody who abuses you that was never his plan or purpose for you because his word says that he had plans to prosper you abuse prospers you in no way being with somebody who is jealous of you jealous so much that they get to the point of hurting you no that's not god's plan for you and for those that may be curious or still not sure about you know 
the evil ways of the narcissist and do I stay with them? Do I live or do I continue to live with them because you have religious folks telling you to continue to stay with the narcissist? I'm going to ask you to take a look at 1 Corinthians verse 15 uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, should I say, verse 33. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. That's the King James Version. If we look at it in the new, in the NIV, it says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. That is not God's plan for you. The narcissist's jealousy is toxic to the very core and it affects your heart when god gives you a way out please take that way out, that way out ask him pray to him talk to him prayer is not you know it, it's just you talking to god but talk to him about preparing your heart for the journey and if you're already on the journey continue to talk to him about strengthening your heart on this journey he is a faithful and a just god and he will see you through you don't need people in your life who are jealous of you because they work to stunt your growth and god has amazing things for you to do in this life and so i just want to encourage you today with this word I thank you so very much for your time. Continue to be amazing people. Be good to yourself and God bless you.